And uh, number two, because actually we have a sub very clear message. We have something similar results in our unit in the Aziz University. Now it is the turn of Professor Ayy Carson to speak about the same uh, subject, which is uh, shrinking of neoplasm more than four centimeter in case of cancer cervix. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for the organizing committee for inviting me. Thanks, Dr. Isra, for clarifying the, the rationale and the value of neoadjuvant therapy in uh, uh, local advanced cervical cancer. Uh, I will have uh, the opposite opinion. Well, I, I will not uh, vote for uh, neoadjuvant therapy for most patients with uh, uh, bulky uh, cervical cancer. And uh, let's, let's first clarify that uh, we should personalize the treatment for each patient. So for some patients, we might uh, uh, choose uh, whatever strategy. But as a general rule for, for caring for patients with uh, uh, bulky uh, cervical disease, uh, it is difficult to challenge an, an already existing solid standard of care since years. And uh, there is a reason why a treatment should uh, be that uh, standard since years that is really effective and difficult to challenge. First of all, cervical cancer is a really peculiar disease if, if, if you do uh, treat uh, ca different cancers. A, a, a disease that stage 1B is considered a locally advanced. That's one uh, a, a peculiar, unique uh, cancer where, where disease in that early stage is, is, con is difficult to treat and causes relapse and mortality in, in, in a, a, a very uh, important proportion of patients. So, Dr. Ezra have suggested neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery, and uh, she made it clear, neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery is better than surgery alone. But again, for bulky cervical cancer, surgery alone it should not cons be considered a an adequate treatment. Well, most patients who do surgery alone would relapse. The only reason in which I would do that if I don't have a radiotherapy machine. And that's, that's one uh, uh, Indian study that did compare uh, neoadjuvant uh, 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 chemo radiation, the standard of care, if you have a radiotherapy machine, and neoadjuvant chemo, then surgery. And again, if you look at the curve on the, on the left-hand side, well, the results, it's, it's not superior. Chemotherapy, then surgery is not superior than uh, uh, chemo radiation. However, if you look at the blue line, it looks like it is inferior. Again, it failed to show that is superior to, to chemo radiation, yet it looks like for the majority of patients it is inferior. So I would not suggest that for a, for a lady with a bulky uh, disease. Another, the ERTC study, very similar design, neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by uh, surgery versus the standard concurrent chemo radiation. And again, numerically inferior results with surgery and chemotherapy. So again, the solid years of age standard of care of concurrent chemo radiation remain the standard therapy. So, so why don't we think of adding, if, if concurrent chemo radiation is that hard to beat, why not add chemotherapy to that? We do that in different cancers. So why not add chemotherapy after concurrent chemo radiation, or why not add chemotherapy before concurrent chemo radiation? That's neoadjuvant. So, be after, well, we do that all the time. If you do surgery for a cancer, we give adjuvant chemotherapy. If you do concurrent chemo radiation, we do adjuvant chemotherapy. In cervical cancer, that failed to improve the outcome. And again, if you're thinking that the red line might be a little bit superior, well, uh, the red line is numerically superior. That have shown that we might have some patients, again, as Dr. Israf have said, metastatic disease exists in cervical cancer. So, and it's not treated by local radiation therapy. So we might have some improvement in, uh, if, if we use uh, uh, chemotherapy. While concurrent chemo radiation is uh, sometimes difficult to implement very rapidly after diagnosis, so why not add it, the chemotherapy, before uh, the radiation? And one smaller study, the phase two study, who did include a large uh, cohort of patients, well, a different uh, patient characteristics with mostly locally advanced disease. To compare this theory, GEMSYS, neoadjuvant chemo, versus concurrent chemo radiation, the standard dose, versus concurrent chemo radiation alone. And with the primary endpoint of progression-free survival, however, striking results that the neoadjuvant chemotherapy not only did not improve the outcome, but was associated with even 
lower progression-free survival and overall survival. Well, that was weird. Delay of, of new adjuvant th radiation or, or delay, of, delay of radiation might be a reason for that. But again, we thought that uh, it, the story is over and we do not have enough evidence to proceed with new adjuvant uh, uh, chemotherapy followed by chemo radiation. However, one very uh, uh, striking result from the interlaced study presented last ESMO, that's two months ago. Uh, the full publication is not yet out, but this is the large UK phase three study that did compare neoadjuvant chemotherapy uh, plus chemoradiation versus chemoradiation alone. And there was a progression free survival, and again, strikingly, there was also an overall survival advantage. That's one complicating uh, study result that's just out. However, in the same meeting, in the last ESMO two months ago, we have one more, comp one more study to complicate the results more. The keynote A18. Now immunotherapy is coming. It did improve the outcome in advanced cervical cancer. And this trial just used the current standard of care of concurrent chemoradiation. Just added pembrolizumab. Immune checkpoint inhibitors, it did work in different cancers, including cervical cancer. So that's the result adding pembrolizumab did improve the results in addition to concurrent chemoradiation. That's one, that's so far the largest study that could challenge such current standard of care. So what do we do in the clinic? Till now, with the results of the uh, uh, Keynote A18 and the interlaced study not yet adopted, you will find concurrent chemoradiation suggested by most of the guidelines. Again, we expect some revisions with the, 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 uh, the, 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 uh, the check the, the full publication of the interlace and with the, the, the further adoption of the keynote A18 study, yet we have chemo radiation remaining the standard of care. So in the future, what do we do? Neoadjuvant chemoimmunotherapy is the real treatment of the future for most cancers because immunotherapy do work in while uh, introduced very early in the disease. That works in melanoma, that works for breast cancer, that works for lung cancer, and it might be the coming treatment for, for uh, 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 cervical cancer as well. However, till now, we still adopt the concurrent chemoradiation. Most patients, my, my take is which patient who I might consider very rarely to use uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy now, well, the first two indications are not very clear, but for some patients where she present with during pregnancy, we, we, we cannot uh, include the uh, 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 chemo radiation in that lady. And in some patients who, who would uh, opt for fertility preservation. Again, that's not in bulky disease. We have a systematic review to, to compare uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy or to test for neoadjuvant chemotherapy for fertility preservation for non-bulky disease. But again, in a patient with a 4.2 centimeters disease who is willing to preserve the fertility, well, we might consider that. In patients presenting at diagnosis with local uh, uh, fistula or infection, well, in some patients and in some uh, uh, scenarios, it's difficult to implement concurrent chemo radiation, so no, neoadjuvant chemotherapy might help. I would counsel that patient for uh, the, the new early results of neoadjuvant chemoimmuno if she, if, if she could have access to. Finally, if you don't have a radiotherapy machine, or if you have a very busy radiotherapy machine where you cannot start concurrent chemo radiation right away, neoadjuvant chemotherapy with the interlaced protocol might be an option for that. And thank you very much.